Okay, so this will wind up being a simple video in regards to what I call as verify, compare, and simulation. Um, one of the things we wind up doing is we have a, a toolpath on the side here, and if I back plot it, uh, it's just a simple going on the outside, uh, doing some roughing in the inside, drilling and chamf chamfering some holes. Uh, just a really quick basic part that I put together. Now there's some errors in here and things of that nature, and I wanted to go ahead and just show you how you can go ahead and set those things up a little bit easy for yourself. Well, the first thing is, is if you're not doing anything with stock setup, don't expect Mastercam to give you the exact results you're looking for because you didn't set some things up into the stock. An example, if I just go ahead and simply just select all right here and verify it, It'll go into the Verify Editor, and what will happen is, I, one, I, I kind of know it's not set up because I can see my stock being in this color red. Uh, I can play it, and it's going to go ahead and play through here and, and show it cutting. And right off the bat, if you've ever used MasterChamp before, um, you're looking at Verify right now, and it's, it's just looking really kind of graphical bad here. Okay, And that's kind of a default setting that uh, I'm not particular fond of, but I want to show you how that uh, works and how to fix it. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is, is you know, when you're cutting something like this, you know, how close are you getting to the part? And uh, we use a lot what we call verify and use to compare. And you'll hit this green little refresh button right here and, you know, show you kind of how you're looking to go ahead and stack up into the color item. Now, in this case, Mastercam does have it plus or minus 10. And again, it looks like the floor is cleaned up. It looks like it's good in some of these here. But let me show you what I'm looking for. Also, the other thing about is collisions and things of that nature. So what I'm going to do is kind of just give you a whole rundown of what I do and how I save these settings so you don't have to do this anymore. I just prefer to have something that's cream, crisp, crisp, and also going to give me the warnings that I'm looking for as well. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll, I'll cancel this out. And the very first thing I really want to do is isolate my part. Now, like many of you know, that I'm just going to go ahead and go to the next to the ghost and turn off the tool pass. I just didn't want to see the tool pass on there. And what I'll wind up doing is if I want, I can just simply click on my part. And I like to hit Alt E. Um, and you can also go ahead and come over here and it's a hide and unhide button. It's Alt E. And you can click on it and it kind of hides everything that you want. And I kind of just want to focus on the part right now. And the reasoning for that is because I can easily go ahead and pick the part that I want to and I'm going to simply go to the stock setup and let's just do one thing at a time. In this case in 2024 they did add a nice little button right here on these add from corners in two parts. You can actually just grab from a, a bottom corner and up to the upper one and that's looking pretty good. So now I've got some stock that's in here. Again just going one step at a time. If I want to go ahead and see a little bit of stock that maybe I want to go ahead and maybe clean up the top, I can simply just cover over it and just type in maybe 10 thousandths and hit enter. And all I'm doing is for is to give myself some, some room uh, so that way when I'm grabbing this one here, again, 0 0.010, enter, enter, there's a little stock for facing. The other thing would wind up being is the outside of the stock. Uh, again, this is not a video of showing you how to really set up your part, but it's important to make sure that you have a good setup in order to go ahead and get the results you're looking for. And let's just say for an example that I'm going to go with an absolute in both directions. What this means is when I pick on this and click on it, maybe I want this to be 4.125. Again, when I click on it, pull it out, 4.125, enter, enter, and I'll do the same here. Pick it and pull it out and I'll just go ahead and do 4.125. I wanted to make it a little bit bigger so you can see it cut. The last thing I'll wind up doing is, again, since this is already anchored up here, we still got our numbers in here, so I can type those numbers in there as well, which is a great way to do that. Matter of fact, I, I probably would have done that to begin with, but I wanted to show you that in this here, 2024, you can do absolute in both directions. And maybe the height's gonna be 1.75. And I just hit that with the anchor on the top, hit enter, and again, I'll go ahead and change the color of this here if I want to as well. Change it to any color I want. I'm going to change this to a little bit of a gray here. Okay, so now i got things I'm looking for, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. I didn't do a vice or anything else. I just did my stock. Let's see what happens here. Now what I'll wind up doing is when I verify it, I can easily see that the color changed to my stock. That looks pretty good. And again, if I want to see the workpiece, well, nothing's really coming up here. Well, the reasoning for that is I really never told it the workpiece that I wanted to use as well. 
So you can imagine if I'm checking collision, it's very important to make sure I have that. Now again, I would do this all in one uh, quick sweep. We'll go into the settings here, but I'm just trying to go one at a time to show you each, each effect. Let's go ahead and go back over into the, the files here. And what I could do is before I do that, it's kind of, I can come over here to the home and let's go back to that Alt-E tab I had. All right, so there's that vice back here. And what I can wind up doing too is look at my level manager. Well, it's nice that they put this, this vice into a different level, which is actually level 10. All right, so we kind of know this together. And you know it's level 10's the vice and, and of course the parts on one. So what you could do is in the files, you can simply go ahead and, and tell it that you'd like to go ahead and add a little bit more to this information. First of all, the work coding uh, has like a, a circle, which kind of you need to put something in here. It would like you to put something in here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And unlike the other one, I'm going to go ahead and click on the fixture. And I'm going to simply just go ahead and tell it the fixture to add from level. Make sure you click on number 10, hit apply, and you'll see number 10 coming through there as well. And perhaps maybe I'm going to go ahead and see this in a vice as well. Maybe a different color. Choose any color that you want. I'll just go ahead and pick this color right here and select OK. And I'll do that one more time, by the way, to make sure I pick that color that I'm looking for. It's really close to this other color here. So let's go ahead and grab something different here. Oh, let's go ahead and grab, uh, let's go ahead and grab any color I want. Let's go grab another gray here. There we go. All right, so we have that done. And now I want to go ahead and say, well, maybe what machine do I want? So on the bottom here, we can actually tell it's a three axis VMC. I could put it to automatic for right now. So kind of feel that uh, I've got most of it picked. In other words, if I look, take a look, um, there's my machine, my groups. Uh, if I want to go ahead and put my start numbers or user configuration, this is what they call the master model. Uh, this would wind up being exactly what I'm comparing to. Let's go ahead and pick on that, select the model, end of selection. We've already did our stock, that looks good. And we also did our vice. And if we want any tooling from here as well, we can actually go from the tooling. All right, let's see what we did here now. So now what happens is because we have this machine group done and we'll go ahead and do verify and we'll take a look. Okay, so we will look like we got our vice and our part in there looking pretty good. Uh, I really don't need to see the zero zero at this point. So I kind of get rid of the nomen and the axes right here. And if I want to make the part look a little bit cleaner, I go to verify and show the edges here. I think it looks a little bit crisper that way as well. Now let's take a look at my collision detection here. If I pull this down, you can see that, again, this is by default. And I'm going to leave this alone, but you're going to see that I want to go do some changes here in a second. So what I'm going to do is, my collision detection is active, by the way, because it's turned on. You can see as I click on it. And I'll go back over to the home page and... When I pull this down, I'll tell it to stop at collisions. So right here, I want to stop at collisions. It's not turned on until I click it, and let's see what happens. Well, when I go ahead and play this, I can see that I've kind of went through here, and there's no collisions that I have here. Kind of disappointing, actually, because I know that I hit this vice. I, I went a little bit too deep. So I kind of want to go ahead and let you know that some things in MasterCam are not set um, by the default, and it's kind of up to you to decide how you want to stop your machine and what you want to look for. In my case, it's a no-brainer. I want to stop in any collisions that I have. Let's kind of go one more step back here and, and take a look. So I'm going to go over to the Verify, and what's going to happen is I am going to go ahead and click on this Collision tab here, and I want to go ahead and do the Tool versus the Fixture. Now, I'm not really wanting to go ahead and put the tool versus the workpiece on because many times when you're tapping and chamfering, you know, that chamfer may not be on the part, so it'll kind of stop all the time. And when you're tapping, the tap is actually bigger than the nominal hole that you're using, so that would stop it as well. So I, I really don't want to worry about this tool versus workpiece. However, if I want to with the shoulder and that, I have these checked on, and I'm ready to go and select OK. Let's, let's see what that little selection did here. I'll rewind it. I'll go ahead and play it. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. When I look at this report list, I want to see that the tool was in the fixture. So I accomplished what I'm looking for. But remember, by default, it's not turned on that way. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you, you do the results you're looking for. So I, I like that method here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this here so I'm not hitting that fixture. So I'll, I'll cancel out of this. I'll go back over to my contour. And I'll just go ahead and change it to another uh, depth here, negative 1.240. That's about 10 thousandths above that stock. It's not much, but it'll at least give me something there. 
All right, so now I select all and I'm going to verify again and let's see if I can get farther. I'll go ahead and play it. No problems there. But again, now I've got all these errors that come up. Well, these aren't really errors as well. They're actually proximities or basically getting close to this one here. In other words, these are proximities that were um, within 30 thousands from the stock and I kind of know that already. Now, I'm not one that's really big fan of how close I get to the stock, so I can actually turn this off right here and only focus on my real collisions here. Now, that's also based on over here when you do verify your collisions, I, I kind of, again, there's the collisions here, and I also like to go ahead and make sure my proximity alerts are turned off. I'm just not a big fan of seeing my how close my tool is getting from the actual part. But it could be helpful and definitely in the lathe and five axis, so there are some times you want to do that. But in this three axis, I'm not really worried about any of that. Well, it looks like everything's pretty good. I'll even rewind it again and play it. And you can see I'm in my report on the bottom and things look pretty good, but I'll go ahead and compare it now. So I go ahead and do verify, compare, because I never go ahead and post out code without comparing, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this refresh button. Well, now I see some problems. It, it looks like that I, I finished the floor, but the walls aren't finished and, and so the holes in the radius. And I have some red in here as well. Well, I'm gonna let you know that by default, again, Masterium doesn't know exactly what tolerance you wanna use. So this is all by recommendation that I've used for years. Well, the floor really isn't done. I actually left 10 thousandths on the floor. But when we verify and compare, it, it almost looks like it's done because it is showing green right here. Well, one of the things I'd like to go ahead and do is maybe change that. I, I really don't want Mastercam to have this, uh, in this case, my opinion, I don't want it to have this loose of a tolerance. So I'm going to come right over here into the compare option. I'm going to change that to 3000.003, select OK. And I'll hit this refresh again. Now you can definitely tell that I did not finish this outside area. This is very important to me because really, I don't want to go ahead and put something like a tenth or so. It's going to be too many colors for me to look at but I definitely have some problems in this area right here. The other thing is, is how it looks, how crisp and clean it looks as well. And this doesn't look so good. You know, I want to make it a little bit crisper. Uh, I know that, again, I have less than 10 thousandths or left than 10 thousandths on this max. You can see 6 to 12, so I have a little here, a little here. But my bottom floor, it definitely changed color from 3 to 6. So I know I left 5 thousandths, and that's exactly what I'm seeing is this floor is a little bit less than that. Well, one of the things, the final thing that I'll let you do is I like to keep things nice and tidy, really clean. So what's going to happen is over here to the file, I want to do options. And when I do options, the biggest culprit that I see is right here. I always want to use 5-axis engine. I'll say yes. And again, this gives me a little bit better graphics. Not even a little, a lot better graphics. And that gives me the the things where the chamfer looks like it was you know, not a chamfer. Uh, it looked kind of raggedy. And, and so I'm going to use this along with this right here, this, this color code. So now with that being done, if you want to do your graphics and change anything, you can. If you want to always have your stock come in as a different color, you can. But that's also done into the setup page and, and any of the fixtures you want done as well. If you don't want that first color to be, you know, a rapid color or, you know, linear color, all these can be done as well. And, of course, the initial feed plane of your turning. All this stuff is, is there. But what I want you to do is when you go ahead and select OK and go ahead and say yes, that just sets your defaults. And, and this is where they go to right here. You can always go ahead and pull it down and give a long-winded, and you want to keep it the same machine simulation and save. So now that we saved it, the only problem is going to wind up being is when we pull this back up in the next day, it's not going to save these settings. And a lot of people wonder why. Well, it's because, you know, each time you close down Mastercam and pull it back up from scratch, it's going to be pulling back up the settings until you go over to the file and choose, in this case, defaults. The best way to do it is make sure you save the defaults. And that's it. Now, when you go ahead and save and say yes, now, no matter what, when you close down Mastercam or open it back up for the next part or generation, all these settings will be done. Let's take a look at how that can affect us. So we cancel it out. And let's see what we got. We answered a few questions here onto the left side of the machine group. We're going to go ahead and hit the verify button. When we hit the verify button, we do know that we have a difference now between the workpiece, which basically is going to wind up being your tool and your stock. And so what we'll wind up doing, here's your fixture. So you can see I can turn that off nice and easy. 
Okay, so if I want that fixture back on, I can. If you want to go ahead and have your workpiece shown, you can, and you can go ahead and, and just display your stock off by just a click. But even if you have your toolpath on, as soon as you go ahead and go into your stop conditions, I'm going to stop it at any collisions. And I hit play, and I'm going through, and I've got no collisions going through. But this time when I do verify, keep in mind that when I go ahead and do that, so I'll go into the refresh button, and I'm not getting a really good clean kind of color on this. Well, the reason for that is because I've got both the workpiece showing and the stock. So my advice is when you're trying to compare against your actual part, just go ahead and click off the workpiece so you can't see it at all and go ahead and pick on to so get a nice check mark on your stock and everything looks really good. Well, we all know that I should have again some green area in here. In this case here, I've got red and what that's telling me is something's definitely not right. Well, in this case, you know, let's take a look. My my greens up here looking pretty good and it's got some red going down here. So there, there's some definitely differences I have. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at that chamfer tool down here into the chamfer and it was at 230. Okay, and with 230 it definitely let me know that I was gouging too much into there. Again, I can tell it from a value right here or I just can put negative 0.2. Let's see the difference here of 30 thousandths. I select all, verify. This time what I'll do is I can actually go ahead and run compare first, which means that it's going to take a look at my part. You can see blue across there, which tells me how much stock I have. And with some people, what they want to do is they want to go by each operation change. That means that if I hit play, it's going to stop at each operation. Looks good. The outside looks like it's going to go ahead and be green, which is in our, our favor. We go ahead and hit play. Looks like we have it roughed out. And in real time, you can actually see that I left stock onto the floor, 6 to 12. And again, the sides are still there. I go ahead and hit play again. So it's stopping after each one, leaving a little bit on the floor. And did not hit the side. And when I hit play again, the drill comes in there, nice and clean. Remember, by default, all these colors wouldn't come in this clean. So it's important to make sure you have a good setting so that way you can go ahead and keep trusting that verify and compare. And when we hit play, now I've got a nice green setting in here as well. So this tells me that I've got all this stuff that's in green is really, really nice and easy to see. But if I had, again, Mastercam defaults, it might be a little difficult for me to go ahead and use their defaults uh, for that as well. So be aware of the defaults, you save it in your configuration and you'll be good to go. The next thing is, is after you go ahead and have this done and verify, of course you'd finish up the walls and the floors, anything that you missed. You can also go into the simulation when you click on it, it automatically puts it into that simulation of the three axis. So now you have this being done as well. And when you play it, you can simply go ahead and keep on to the operation. You can turn it off and when it goes real quickly, there's a mode up here, especially also in the verify the same thing, but you can go ahead and put a time mode in here too which allows it to go ahead and just go a little bit slower at your time. Now you can adjust it and see that whatever you have your feed rate. So you can also find out if you had a feed rate that was a little bit too slow as well. This would be a good indication that you have a little slow feed rate in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it into the middle in here and put it back into my G1. And again, it comes in here and you can start to see that it's going to go ahead and go down each one and it's going to stop. If there's any collision, it'll stop. It'll tell me what's going to happen into the verification and keep going. So you have your verification. You also have your verify, but as soon as you have the things you need to, let Mastercam go ahead and kind of dictate what you want. Hit the compare button. And again, you can still compare into machine simulation as well. So it's kind of neat that you can do that all just with a matter of just a click of a button up at the top in this 2024. All right, hopefully this video helps you and to make sure that you can compare and go ahead and simulate and verify all within the same aspect of Mastercam without choosing again this simulator option that we used to in, into 2023 or going up the top and choosing this simulation. Now you can go all do it all in one click and you're able to go ahead and get good results and to count on them in order to go ahead and make sure that you got the right color and left enough stock in the areas that you're looking for.